following these currency life cycles. Cycles is something that I'm pretty big in, and I have some questions to ask you about that. But you talked about um, the day the currency died was 2008. Now, um, <laughs> there's a lot of days that it died, right? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it dies maybe- every day through inflation. <laughs> yeah, so yes, but but I mean, like maybe that maybe the dollar died in you know 1913 when the Federal Reserve was born, or maybe it died in 1944 when the Bretton Woods Agreement, or maybe it died in 71 when Nixon took it off the standard, or or 08. So why do you say 08? Well, I say 08 because that's when they really ran out of tools. And the only thing that they had left are interest rates and just creating more money. And and you're absolutely right, because it's been dying in slow deaths since they brought in the Federal Reserve and started to remove, you know, gold, something real from backing our currency. But uh, yeah, 2008, is when they dropped interest rates to zero, which is their biggest tool, and they've not been, and I'm talking about global central banks, so it's not just the Fed, but it's globally, uh, and they've not been able to raise them. Of course they can't. So really all they have left is printing money, devaluing the currency, and getting set up to take us into a new system. So that's why. And also Christine Lagarde in 2009 in a Bloomberg interview, which is gone now, but used the word reset, about 27 times hmm. in that half an hour interview, which yeah. really caught my attention. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You know, um, I think about it in terms of playing a, a board game, right? Where like we're playing Scrabble or whatever. And at some point you're out of moves. <laughs> and exactly. when you're out of moves, what do you do? Like you reset the game kind of a thing. And so that kind of comes to mind when you talk about that. Um, you know, one thing going back to that currency a little bit further, uh, I, I kind of rattled off a couple of dates. So, you know, the day the Federal Reserve was created, they started printing more currency, obviously. Um, the the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944, maybe, I don't know, kind of brought it back into a peg at least. And then a lot of people talk about like that 71 when Nixon took us off of that gold mm-hmm. standard. Um, but, you know, another way that I've been thinking about this just recently, really, maybe in the last month or two, is that we never actually came off of a gold standard. What he did is remove the peg. Right. The dollar still, I mean, gold's still priced in dollars. At the end of the day, the market has just repriced gold uh, and the dollar exchange rate. Maybe he just removed the peg. We never got off the gold standard. Is that a way to look at it? Um, I wouldn't really look at it quite like that because while you are right, and I mean, and gold is, is valued in terms of any fiat currency anywhere in the world, what created the gold standard were the restrictions that having gold backing the currency created. So it really required fiscal responsibility. In 71, Nixon handed, what, what, really, what that really happened in, in 71 was that Nixon handed over full control of inflation to the central banks, to the private banks. And what do banks know? They know debt and they know interest. But um, so you could say that it, it, it Really, it's been dying since 1913, but uh, no, we're not still on the gold standard as a government or as a country or around the world, but I personally am absolutely (laughs) on the gold and silver standard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you run metal standard. Yeah, you run your account on those. Yeah, I guess it's just like a little bit of a. I love to look at things from different angles and different Mm -hmm. perspectives, and sometimes it gives me you know more clarity. Um, You know, to to your point though, like you said, well, um, when we got off the gold standard, it took away the restraint. But like I could also say, we never had restraint. I made a video recently, and I was uh, refuting Ray Dalio's point. Um, He said that the government would make Bitcoin illegal because. They uh, because the same reason they made gold illegal, which was they didn't want a competing form of money. That's what he said. And I refuted that. And I said, well, I don't think his understanding of the events in history are correct, because in 1913, the Federal Reserve was created and they printed way too many dollars. And by 1933, so back to that restraint. They didn't have restraint. They printed way too many dollars. And so by 1933, the government owed gold. They owed gold to creditors. And right. so the they didn't owe dollars. They owed gold. And so they took the gold to pay the creditors. And it wasn't, at least in my understanding, it wasn't that they didn't want to compete in foreign money. They owed the gold and they needed the gold. Um, and so, and then, uh, then of course they, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about can that. I, can I kind of jump yeah, in there? Please do. 
Because, you know, really what happened during that, I love that period of time, and I feel like we're living through that again with the Roaring Twenties. But when you, we were on the gold standard, and you're right, they owed the gold. So if an individual did not like what the government was doing, then they had the ability to walk into a bank and convert their dollars into gold, pull the gold out of, out of the system, and create greater restrictions. Right. So um, a competing currency or just taking away the public's power, because that was a public power that if you had enough people that did it, you know, then you have a run on the banks, et cetera. So they did all own the gold. You're absolutely right about that. But it was too, more to the citizens in 71. It was to the other governments, global governments. But 33, they had to take that control away from the citizens. So you think it was more about taking away control than it was paying the creditors because they yes, didn't want to default yeah. on the creditors. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I, I value your opinion. But, so it's, so it's Good Absolutely. And I want to say I love to I love what you said earlier about looking at things from a different point of view, because when you do that, it is amazing what you see. Right.